Ladies and gentlemen, welcome again to another show of the Healthy Tech Talk Network. Uh, blood sugar is sitting at 6.8. Yay. Blood pressure it was 151. Then I waited two minutes and it drops down to 140. Go figure. I bet you a lot of uh, all of you that are listening to the show have the same issue. You walk into your doctor's office and it shoots up through the roof. It's called white coat or white coat lab syndrome or something, doctor syndrome, where uh, you don't like going to the doctor, so your blood pressure goes up. So interesting. And my pain threshold today was at a nine. I almost didn't get the show on the way. Uh, I had to stay in bed until noon because the pain was so bad. We will talk about that after the intro. It's a little bit better now, as you can plainly see. See you in a minute, folks. All right, let the show and the fun begin. See you in a minute. Welcome to the eFlexonics Podcast Network. Join us for the latest tips and tricks from experts in their fields, showing you how you can be happy, healthy, and more productive when using technology, either at home or at work. Remember, tech shouldn't have to hurt. Our motto is, everything healthful and helpful for the computer user. Enjoy the show. Rick and Pat. All right, now that we've got the intro out of the way, um, boy, boy, it was a tough, it was tough uh, trying to get out of bed today. I woke up at 8 o'clock in the morning and my whole head and back and neck was just a train wreck. I had to say to my wife, honey, could you please get me an ice pack? And she brought it to me and that was it. I was done. I was cooked like dinner. Until noon, I finally got out, and I felt not not bad. I still had a terrible headache at noon, but at least I could function. But I tell you what, uh, it was bad. Scale of uh, scale on the, on the Richter scale was nine. I I was tempted if it lasted you know another couple of hours, I was tempted to go to the emergency ward. So you're gonna have those days. So today, let's talk about a couple of things that uh, that we can do to combat stress. This is one of the days, remember I promised you at the beginning, that this is day four of our 30-day program, that there will be good days and not-so-good days. Yeah, well, this is one of the not-so-good days. Anyway, we're on, we're live, and we're proud to be here. Um, here's a couple of things that I wanted to address with you that's really quite important. A lot of us, when we have chronic pain, we, we're afraid to stretch. And stretching when you're in the middle of pain is a no, you, you just don't want to do it because for some of us it causes excruciating pain. Why would you want to push the pain envelope more when you're, you know, lying on the floor in a fetal position, rocking back and forth um, in pain? But you know, it's really, really important to stretch when you're in that good state of mind when you don't have a lot of pain because what you want to do is you want to set up your body. Find a place in your home that is uh, comfortable, that the uh, environment is warm and inviting, and that people will leave you alone. If you've got screaming kids and you're in chronic pain, that's no good. You have to dedicate part of your home to you, just to you, a, a sanctuary that you can go to, that you can say, okay, this is my space. Everybody knows that they have to leave mom and dad, no mom or dad alone. If they're having a bad time, or just when you want to, when you want to escape, and when you want to enjoy a book or a podcast or whatever it is, or you just want to sit down with a cup of coffee or tea, even a glass of water, go to that sanctuary, and get used to going there. You know, once a day, twice a day, three times a day, and just relaxing. What's nice about that is when you have a bad moment again, it's just like the stretching. Automatic response is to go there. And you will find some kind of a, a, a refuge psychologically. I happen to have a, a, a small library that I love to go and just relax and pull, out, pull down a book. Well, when I'm, when I'm in a lot of pain, I don't feel like reading, but I will listen to an audio book there. And it, is, it makes a whole world of difference. When, when I know that there is a spot in my house where it's dedicated for me and, and people in the family, people in the household understand and they know, if they find me there, <laughs> it's almost like a signal. Please don't bother me for a little while there. I am having a moment where I need to be with the pain and deal with the pain. <laughs> now today, let's talk about something that that uh, I uh, very close to my heart. I used to do Tai Chi three times a day. And one of the most important things about the tenets of Tai Chi is breath work. 
Um, if you take a look at the old masters and watch how they breathe, the entire movement structure or movement flow of any of the internal martial arts, uh, Zing, uh, Tai Chi, Bagua, Temple Boxing, they all have been developed around breath. Now, what, I, what I'd like to suggest to you today is this. And this is a simple exercise that uh, I'm going to show you and I'm going to teach you that I'm going to uh, uh, put in my seminar program for computer users. It is um, breathing using your hands as indicators. And it's really neat because you would think on the surface that this exercise would be very simple, elemental, and basic, but it's quite difficult to do. It's quite hard to do. And you really have to pay attention. So here's the premise of the, of the exercise. As you breathe in, I want you to take one of your hands, doesn't matter which one, your dominant hand usually works the better one, best. And as you breathe in, you, you raise your hand, and then as you breathe out, you can bend it at the elbow, or you can do the whole hand if you want, your shoulder. But I just usually bend mine at the elbow. And then as you breathe out, just let that hand go down to a level course. Now, here's the, the, the part that I'm going to challenge you with. You would think that, the, okay, so nothing to it, right? Yeah, in, out, in, out. Try it. Your hand, it's, it's interesting to note that your hand will have a difficult time mimicking your breath exactly. Okay, so I used to study with um, Master Simon at Temple Kung Fu in North Vancouver. And his premise is, there's always, when you take a breath in and take a breath out between there, there's that slight little pause. That pause is what's going to be difficult for you to get with the hand movements. I'll show you what I mean. So watch this. I will take a breath in, I will take a breath out, and watch my hand as it tries to mimic the movement of my diaphragm as I breathe. You ready? Okay, here we go. And what this does is it, it automatically relaxes the body as well. It gives your mind, again, another diversion, something to do. But it anchors it on your hand as a breathing device working with your diaphragm. You ready? Okay, here we go. Now, lots of people will say, well, okay, so to breathe properly, you have to ex exhale twice or three times as long as you inhale. That's not the mechanics of this structured exercise right now. All I wanted you to do is spend about the same amount of time inhaling as you do exhaling. What I want you to get used to is this. Use your hand and arm as an indicator of breathing. And what will happen is you will actually, in time, for some of you, it's only going to take a couple of minutes, you'll actually be able to slow your breathing down. Now, when you do that, you slow your heart rhythm down, you slow your um, your nervous system down, and a whole bunch of things magically start happening. When you're in pain, the pain increases your pulse and increases your heart rate and things like that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to flip that on its axis, 180 degrees. So when you're in pain, it's prudent upon you to start doing these breathing exercises with your hands as indicators. Are you right? Let, let's review that. Okay, you ready? Let's do this again. Okay. Now, here's the challenge. Slow this arm movement down and your breathing down as slow as you possibly can. This action alone, believe it or not, will help you tremendously when you have a bad day, a bad moment, a bad 10 minutes, a bad hour. 
Because the more you relax and the more you can take control of your relaxation experience, the better it is that you, you'll be able to handle pain tolerances. The more you practice this, and you know, it's really, if you've ever seen somebody do Tai Chi, what I'll do is I'll put, uh, I did uh, Yang style Tai Chi and I put it on a video and I'll put the link below this video so you can watch. But when you do Tai Chi, you'll, you'll take both arms and you'll bring them up, bring them up like this. And as you, it's almost like sitting down in a chair when you're, when you're, the arms come up, you always inhale, and when your arms go down, you always exhale. Conversely, in Tai Chi, when your arms are pulled towards you, you always inhale. When you push away from you, you always exhale. So, if you start doing this and start doing the hand exercise, and then when you get real good at it, you'll be able to slow your breathing down to maybe 3% or 300%, whereas your respiratory will just be so relaxed and then you can use that as a tool to help you combat pain too right um it's it's fascinating to think and uh, let's let's figure this out in china billions of people cannot be wrong when they practice yang style tai chi or the other style tai chi they don't have the health issues that we do over in north america why they're breathing properly they're breathing from their diaphragm. They're just, if you start breathing from your lungs, like we over here in the West do, um, you're not getting your oxygen to your body that you need to. But when you start focusing on breathing from your abdomen, like a little baby does, that's why I use hand movements when I breathe. Now, when you get really good at this, you can take this method to bed with you and use just a finger. <laughs> so, for example, if you're lying in bed and you don't want to use your whole arm because it takes a lot of effort, right? Just use one finger. Just have one finger there. And so, for example, watch this. Okay, I'm going to breathe in. You can just use a finger. And if you notice something, even after one or two or three controlled breaths with your hand, you will notice that your entire body, your speech slows down. Your actions slow down. It's because you're controlling your, your breathing and supplying fresh oxygenated blood to your body. And that, you might not, this might be the first time in your busy life that you've ever even thought of focusing on breathing and using hands as an indicator for breathing. Really, what, what the hand is, is, is just a trigger mechanism, right? Right. I could say, okay, just focus on your breathing, but if you visually see something, if you have to concentrate on seeing something and working something in conjunction with the rhythm of the breath, ah, it gives you something to do, doesn't it? It adds another dimension. Again, it's a diversion tactic. Hey, I'm all for diversion tactics. So today's uh, lesson or quick tip was use your hand uh, as, a, as an indicator for breathing. Try that for, I would say, a count of uh, 30 or 40 or 50 times, right? And you will find the most incredible relaxation comes upon you. And then when you start getting a twinge of that pain, coming back, that chronic pain, instantly go into the, the movement of using your hand as indicators. And I'll bet, I'll ch I'm willing to bet, that you will be able to change the perception of your pain, how you react to it, how you uh, how you actually embrace it, <laughs> how you deal with it, and the, with the combination of going to your your safe place in your home and using those breathing techniques, it can make a big difference. So do that for a couple of days and write down in your diary or uh, or you know use your smartphone and put put uh, down in the diary there. And let me know how, how it goes. Uh, give us an email at uh, healthytechtalk at gmail.com. Folks, I've wasted enough of your time. We'll see you next show. Take care. Bye-bye.